The other day, you talked to Jonathan Zygen about his 74-year-old mother, Vivian Silver. I just visited with him in Tel Aviv to get an update on, on the situation. He was, he was so uh, troubled by what is happening right now. Um, so he was sort of trying to channel his mother, who, as you know, is a, is a, a peace and reconciliation activist who was living on a kibbutz next to Gaza. I, I asked him uh, what he thought of the moment. We need to stop the violence now. Vengeance is not a strategy. We need to negotiate and we need to get the captives out. That's what I'm saying. I call on, on everybody, on the Israeli government, on Hamas, and Canada, everybody to put pressure on both sides to negotiate and to, to get the captives out. His mother, 74-year-old woman who lived in a kibbutz on the border of, uh, of Gaza, was a peace activist. Her, her entire life was devoted to not just peace in the abstract, but reconciliation with Palestinians. Uh, one of the problems of Gaza is health care is not particularly good there for various reasons. They're blockaded and always have been from getting certain equipment. So if you've got cancer, you have to leave Gaza to get that treatment. She was one of those people who meets you on the Israeli side to take you for that treatment. I asked him what he knew, uh, what the latest was this morning on the condition or, or the status of his mother? The only thing I know for a fact is that her body isn't in the house. Uh, other than that, we do have indications, rumors, we have strong assumptions that she is being held in Gaza. But I'm careful because I don't really know. I, I asked him uh, what he wants uh, what he wants the world to know about his mother. I want to tell her I miss her. How much she means to me, to my kids, and to so so many people all over the world, and that we're waiting for him. How are your kids? They keep their childhood intact. It's not a really healthy home right now because their parents are preoccupied. My daughter said, so who's gonna make me my birthday cake next, next year? I would like for this to be a trauma that we grow, we grow from. You know, sometimes it's the saying, it's darkest before the dawn. I like the, there to be a dawn because if we continue on the same path, it's going to stay dark forever. However, uh, this is how he's reconciling this. He, he's, he's really struggling with what he's supposed to think, given that his mother is a peace activist and wouldn't want violence. Here's what he told me when I, when I asked him about her. My community is wiped out. It's, it's incomprehensible. It's just, and it was very vicious, viciously done. But um, that's the point, that's the point. The only way to be safe is to have peace. It's a cycle. We, we're gonna wipe out Gaza now. Kids would grow up. In 50 years, it will happen again. He was channeling what, you know, I was asking him what his mother uh, might have said if I were interviewing mm. her instead of him. So it, it's, it's complex here. It, 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 from afar, you know, it may feel that it's simple, but, but here on the ground, even for Israelis who are grieving and fearful and very, very worried, it's a range well, of emotions and complexity.